Listening to the Show Lab Producer Podcast, the podcast that's strictly for producers. This show has been brought to you by SacredApparel.net. The homie Twink and the crew over there are always coming up with the latest fashions, the tees, the hoodies, and the hats. Right now, they got a store-wide sale going on, everything 20% off. This would be a great time to pick up a hoodie. Everything 40% off, regular price $40, now they $25 a hoodie. And the dope thing that I like about Sacred Apparel, they got tees for the big home. So go check them out, sacredapparel.net, a clothing store for the ladies and gentlemen that choose to live sacred. You dig? Yo, this is Surface. And you're listening to the Show Lab producer podcast with my homie Marv. Keep it locked. Are you a producer or artist that is lacking confidence in your music? Well, now you can get your music critiqued by Industry Vet. The Amazing Beat Critique by Producer Vet, The Amazing SB. Get your one-on-one video consultation via Skype or FaceTime. Submit three beats or three songs, and he will provide feedback and any questions that you may have pertaining to your music or the industry. So contact The Amazing SB today at AmazingBeatCritique at gmail.com. Again, that's AmazingBeatCritique at gmail.com. Contact him and book your session today are you working on a project and you're looking for your next banger well check out the team over at soundhbeats.com looking for a variety of production well the homie ray and the crew over there can take care of all of your musical needs they got exclusives leases and they got a clearance sale over there are your artists on a budget well now they are offering bulk discount prices on their lease beats so what you waiting on head on over to soundhbeats.com and pick up your banger today. Christian music, all hearts, soundhbeats.com. Yo, this is the amazing SB, and you're listening to the Show Lab Producer Podcast with my homie, Marv. Make sure you're tuned in to theamazingsb.com. Are you a producer or artist that is lacking confidence in your music? Well, now you can get your music critiqued by Industry Vet. The Amazing Beat Critique by Producer Vet, The Amazing SB. Get your one-on-one video consultation via Skype or FaceTime. Submit three beats or three songs, and he will provide feedback and any questions that you may have pertaining to your music or the industry. So contact The Amazing SB today at AmazingBeatCritique at gmail.com. Again, that's AmazingBeatCritique at gmail.com. Contact him and book your session today. You're listening to the Show Lab Producer Podcast, where we talk about nothing but producer stuff. You dig? Yo, 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 yo. Yo, what up? What up, what up, what up? How y'all doing? This is your boy, Mark from Beats. I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Show Lab Producer Podcast, where we talk about nothing but producer stuff, man. How y'all doing for this Tuesday afternoon? I'm good. Feeling real good. Got a great show today. Uh, I have producer engineer, engineer, and he's an iStandard uh, media brand rep. Gio DeRique is going to be in the building. We're going to be talking to him about uh, the importance of engineering, you know, uh, something that uh, producers have a tendency to lack on, man. I mean, we can have dope beats. We can have, you know, it can be banging. But if the mix suck, uh, it's a possibility it may you may lose out on placement. You know, uh, you may have a hard time selling it. Uh, so uh, we're going to have Gio on the show, man, and he's going to just talk about, you know, some simple techniques, simple things uh, that a producer can do uh, to make that first and that best, the best impress, impression uh, with their music. All right. Yeah, we got him on the show today, man. Um, I, I'm sorry, I just lost my train of thought. I was thinking about something else. But anyway, uh <laughs> Let's get into the scripture. You know, I got to start the show with a scripture. And the scripture is coming from Psalms 34. Psalms chapter 34, verse 1 in the Message Bible. And it reads, I bless God every chance I get. My lungs expand with his praise. I live and breathe God. If things aren't going well, hear this and be happy. Join me in spreading the news together. Let's get the word out. God, get me more than halfway. 
He freed me from my anxious fears. Look at him. Give him your warmest smile. Never hide your feelings from him. When I was in this, when I was desperate, I called out and God got me out of a tight spot. God's angels set up a circle of protection around me while we pray around us while we pray. Open up your mouth and taste and open up your eyes and see how God is good. Bless all who bless all you who run with him. Worship God if you want the best. Worship opens doors to all his goodness. And that is Psalms chapter 34 verses 1 through 7 that I read. And um uh, actually that was one of the first scriptures that uh I that I that I I read and memorized uh, when I first became a, a Christian man. And then the King James it talks about uh it says I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise should continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. And man, every day, we have something to be grateful for, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we should always, you know, uh, be, in a, be, be in a habit of saying, thank you, Lord. You know, I know, uh, you know, we living in a, in a time, man, where, you know, killing and Everything is at an all-time high, man. And just keeping it real, man, I mean, tomorrow is not promised. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but every time we wake up, man, we should be able to say, thank you, Lord. You know what I'm saying? Thank God, you know, for the good and for the bad situation, man. Because I tell you what, it can, all be, it can always be worse. You know what I'm saying? Somebody's situation is... Is worse than yours. So, hey man, that's enough to give God thanks, man. Give God thanks for being able to wake up, go to work, wake up. Uh, he be grateful that he wake your family up. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's in perfect health and uh, their limbs is working, man. So uh, we have a lot to be grateful for, man. And uh, that is the scripture for today. That's Psalms 34. Verse 1 through 7. Again, man, this is the Show Lab Producer Podcast, where we talk about nothing but producer stuff, man. And like I said, man, we got a great show that's coming up. I'm going to have my boy Gio the Rican. Uh, he's going to be in the building, man. He's going to tell us about, he's going to tell us his favorite three uh, engineers that's in the game. You know, three guys that he look up to, man. And it's a real good show, man. A lot of important information uh, that will be very, very that is very beneficial and will be beneficial to you as a producer man just to be able to get clean mixes all right you listen to the show lab producer podcast where we talk about nothing but producer stuff you dig You're listening to the Show Lab Producer Podcast, where we talk about nothing but producer stuff. You dig?
Want to make sure y'all connected, y'all definitely stay tuned. MySpace.com backslash symbolic one. Also, MySpace.com. And you're listening to the Show Lab Producer Podcast with my man Marv. Keep it locked. Please welcome Bruce Sweeting. What I'm going to talk about today really is my life in the music recording studio. The first thing I want to tell you is that no matter how good a song is or how accomplished the musicians playing it are a poorly done recording and mix of that song will leave you cold. In other words, it will leave the listener with a bad impression of what the song could really be. So it's up to us as music recording and mixing people to do the best work that we possibly can. You're listening to the Show Lab Producer Podcast, where we talk about nothing but producer stuff. Unique. Yes, sir. You're listening to the Show Lab Producer Podcast, man. I am your boy, Marfamo Beats, man. Uh, that was an excerpt that I um, found. Uh, online and the excerpt is from uh, engineer Bruce Weeding. Uh, go look that guy up. He's been in the he's been an uh, engineer uh, before I was born. So uh, this is a guy that's full of wisdom. Uh, I clipped it from uh, from the uh, from uh, from, uh, from, uh, from another pod- podcast, courtesy uh, from Beats One Radio. Uh, I I was uh, listening. I was like, man. That is that would go great for the, with the show today. So uh, check that guy out, Bruce Sweeting. He's an engineer. Uh, he has engineered some of the biggest albums, biggest records uh, to date. So yeah, check that out, man. And producer news: legendary music producer Jazzy Fade, real name Phelan. And Alexander has made hits for many of his favorite artists, including Usher, Missy Elliott, Mary J. Blige, Sierra, Lil Wayne. Uh, but according to the JasmineBrand.com, exclusively reports that his royalty checks aren't covering his expenses. Jazzy filed Chapter 13 bankruptcy last month in Georgia detailing how he is drowning in over six hundred six hundred twenty five thousand dollars worth of debt according to the court documents the music producer and ceo of futuristic entertainments has less than 
has less than $590,000 in assets and over $625,000 owed in liabilities and creditors. His gross income for this year has only been $30,000, and last year he only made $65,000 from his business. His company takes in $14,000 per month. Wow. That says a lot, man. That, that, whew. I've never made that much money as a producer. Uh, but, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I, at the end of the day, man, you just have to be a good steward. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I think, you know, that's something that always, that's always a struggle. You know, about being a good steward. And one thing about producers, man, like, you don't get that money. I mean, it's not like a weekly check. You know what I'm saying? The royalties only come every three months. So, you know what I'm saying? You got to be able to uh, manage well, you know what I'm saying? And it shucks, man. That's a lot. $625,000 that he owed. So, uh, yeah, man, it's just, I guess it's, you know, just a, uh, a lesson to be learned, man. We have to be good stewards. Because one thing about the music business, it definitely fluctuates. You know, it's up and it's down unless you are, you know, nonstop popping and high demand. Uh, you definitely got to be able to be a good steward of of the bread. Uh, in other news, in Houston, in my back in my backyard, uh, a local rap music producer and some big name artists are named in a lawsuit, according accusing them of fraud. The suit was filed in Bexar County by CEO of an entertainment company claiming that producer Mr. Lee, who real who real name is Leroy Williams, violated a contract with him and defrauded him. Ryan Elder, who owns Elder Entertainment, is suing for as much as $1 million, claiming he paid Mr. Lee for videos that were never produced Elder also claimed he purchased more than 100 songs from the producer who would then sell them to other artists. And that's a (laughs) no-no. That's definitely a no-no, Mr. Lee. I hope that's not right. Allegedly, this is what uh, Ryan Elder is saying. Um, you You can't find out someone else is using your song until it comes out. After doing some research, that's how I found out that all of those songs that I own are being used by other people, Elder said. Elder claims to several to own several songs that the rapper Slim Thug used on his album. You know, I was reading an article this morning uh, about, you know, just uh, the, the and I'm going to have it up on my website, morphamobeast.com. Three contracts that a producer should know. And uh, one of them was understanding uh, what's uh, exclusive and a non-exclusive. And um, basically, it sounds like, according to what Ryan Elder uh, is coming from, that these, these that these songs were exclusively sold to him. And then Mr. Lee went allegedly... Uh, went back and resold them to other artists. Now, I don't know what the I don't know what the agreement was, but if something is sold to an artist exclusively, according to my standards in the contracts that I use, that is meaning it's exclusive to that artist. Meaning that once you purchase a track from Marfamo Beats, it is your track. Now I keep my I, I, I keep my, my copyrights and uh you know because I cop I, I keep it for for uh for my own copyright purposes. But in the clause in the contract that I have that once I sell a track to you, that is it. You know. Now, if it was a case where it was a non-exclusive, non-exclusive means that I can sell you a track, I I can sell an artist a track. But I still have the rights to be able to use it, resell it, and, you know, do whatever. That's That would be a non-exclusive track. But exclusive... 
I don't. I, it, it just, I, I guess, for conscious sake, it just wouldn't be right to do so. Uh, hopefully, man, they'd be able to work that out, man. Hopefully, Mr. Lee ain't rocking that way where he, uh, you know, getting the bread and then reselling dudes' uh, songs, man. That, I mean, that would be whack. That definitely would be whack, and it's not good for the reputation. So, uh, and as and as, I guess as that new as that story go on, man, I keep, keep you guys posted on it. Uh, and that's the produ- producer news for today. And about a minute or so, I'm going to have my boy Gio, the Reekin, on the line. And we're going to get into it, man. And we're going to talk about the importance of engineering, the importance of mixing and mastering, man. So uh, be looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to listening to it, listening to him uh, give us his expertise. And yeah. That'll be that'll be popping off in about a minute or two. And you're listening to the Show Lab Producer Podcast, where we talk about nothing but producer stuff. You are listening to the Show Lab Producer Podcast, the podcast that's strictly for producers. This show has been brought to you by sacredapparel.net. The homie Twink and the crew over there are always coming up with the latest fashions, the tees, the hoodies, and the hats. Right now, they got a store-wide sale going on, everything 20% off. This would be a great time to pick up a hoodie. Everything 40% off, regular price $40, now they $25 a hoodie. And the dope thing that I like about Sacred Apparel, they got tees for the big homes. So go check them out, sacredapparel.net, a clothing store for the ladies and gentlemen that choose to live sacred. You dig? Hey, yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy Swift, a.k.a. Chef Boyard Swift, a.k.a. Dr. Swigglesworth. You are now listening to the Show Lab Producer Podcast with my man Marl from Mo Beats, you know what I'm saying? If you listen to any other podcast, you're slacking. Producers, step your game up by learning from the best. You dig? Holla at your boy. Peace. You're listening to the Show Lab Producer Podcast, where we talk about nothing but producer stuff. You dig? Yes, you're listening to the Show Lab Producer Podcast. I am your boy, Mar from Beats Man, and I got my guy. He's a producer engineer. Uh, he's an I standard brand brand media uh, media rep, uh, but his he it look as far as what I see. And just with all the videos and stuff, he's an engineer by trade. Uh, he always he's always posting videos and stuff. Uh, and I would like to welcome my guy, my homie, Geo the Rican to the show. What up, homie? Yo, Geo, you there? You? You? Yeah. What up, man? I, I lost you for a minute. You there? Yeah, 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 man. I was here, man. I was, I was listening to the intro, and then I kind of like, you know, what I'm saying, kind of cut off for whatever reason. But I hear you now. Um, but, happy to be a part of the show lab. No doubt, hey, man. You know what you're doing for producers, man. And, and, and I'm saying, it's good work, man. Great work, what you're doing. No doubt, man. I appreciate you uh, taking your t- taking your time out uh, to be a part of the show, man. Uh, before we get into what you do. And, uh, you know, just far as an engineer, from the engineer aspect, man, let's quickly just tell the people what you do, well, who you are, what you do, and all that good stuff. Yeah, well, I go by the name Gio the Rican. Um, I'm from the Bronx, New York, and um, I'm a, um, like you said, I'm an engineer by trade. Uh, I've been producing since uh, 
since I was 14, that's way back in like 2002. Um, I started engineering professionally around 2010. And um, basically, when I first started producing, that was, you know, when I was a young kid and, you know, I started rapping. And I just hated how I sounded when I recorded my stuff. So I said, well, you know, what's the next best thing? And then I was producing. Right. And then uh, around 2009, 2010, I said, well, you know, everybody's, it seems like everybody's producing now. What's the next best step to get my foot in the door? And I, um, I started looking into engineering. And then I went to a school here in New York called the Institute of Audio Research. Uh-huh. And, you know, I ended up, you know, and I ended up being, you know, pretty good at it. You know, I, I took an interest in it. I took it very seriously because at first it was kind of just, you know, oh, it's just going to get me in the door so I could play my beats. But I started really developing um, a passion and a certain level of professionalism that goes with it. And so right now, aside from what I do for I Stand Up Producers and their social media team, I'm just trying to kind of educate the young engineers who maybe, you know, didn't learn. So, yeah, I've been engineering professionally uh, since 2010. Uh-huh. Um, started, with, started with, you know, the local artists, uh, you know, from the young kids to the older crowd. And and those those sessions in the beginning that some engineers might not value, you know, they, you know, they just want to focus on the big artist sessions. You know, those really molded me, and they gave me the mentality to be professional right. when I was in the room with, you know, you know, with the Manos and the Vados and Uncle Murders and, and, you know, and, like, the Ja Rules. You know, those, if it wasn't for the ones that, you know, if it wasn't for the ones in the beginning, I wouldn't be as prepared as I was when I was in the, the real make or break situations. Uh-huh. So I've been doing it for, for like six years and I'm, I'm grateful for every year so far. No doubt, man. Well, you you know, one I guess the, the reason I wanted I wanted to have you on the show is, man, because I had been paying attention to uh, the videos that you were doing on, on Instagram. And, you know, one thing that I try to strive in and mixing and mastering is not my expertise. I can do it. Uh, I can do it enough to the point where uh, when I'm trying to when I'm when I'm submitting or when I'm submitting tracks to an artist, I can make it sound appealing. And my I guess my question is, how important is it for producers beats to sound good? I mean, because sometimes some sometimes dudes be like, well, man, just send me a demo. But do you believe in just sending a demo or, or should a producer have that mug? Uh, fully mixed or definitely definitely decent mixed yeah I think I think the producer should should, should understand the, the process you know uh-huh. because um, like say for instance let me walk you through when I'm producing yeah um, like my kind of train of thought right so I use reason you know I use reason and that's where I kind of use uh, that's where I'm putting on that producer hat now, I, I do my mixing in Pro Tools. Now, me, I have that certain mental separation that when I load up that Pro Tools screen, uh-huh. I am an engineer. I'm in engineering mode. You can't. I cannot make any creative decisions when I'm loading up the Pro Tools. So I think it all starts in your production process. Right. Right. Because a lot of producers, you know, they just want it to be loud. They just want it to be loud. Right. And I think. If, if, they get, if a producer gives themselves enough headroom, you know, ma- making sure that it's not it's not at the top of that meter, right? It's not red all the time. Um, it's gonna give you a sense of, of it's gonna give you music a little a little breathing room, right? You know, and I think it's, it's very important, uh, especially being a part of I Stand Up Producers. You know, I I witnessed this at every showcase, right? You know, I've I've been to about I've been to about ten showcases now about 15 producers in, in each one times that by five songs each one I've heard a bunch of beats and every producer that's won the judges always critique on hey the mix was great the mix was amazing right because especially now I think it's unfortunate that everybody's focusing on like the 808 or the bass and there's you know that's only about 100 frequencies out of about 16,000 you know so so I think just producers understanding that that's the next phase of your production right. is is already putting them in the right direction. Wow, man, that's you know, 
um, that's good that you said that you say that, man. That um, you know, even at the at the at the B showcases, that's something that they're listening to and looking for. I mean, that's that's what the that's what the judges are listening for, man. Um, you know, I think that that have been that has been a lot of producers. Uh, downfall, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, not mix, not mix properly. Even myself, man, I have had a, I have had banging beats, but I have had dudes to be like, yo, man, it's, it just seemed like it's just, the sound just sound over the top, you know? And, you know, from s- somebody that's, you know, somebody that's not, that's not their expertise or that's not their lane. And, Say for and, and for the producer that may not have, you know, what I'm saying the capability to pay another engineer. Is there is there like a, a a simple process on, you know, how to get a good mix? Because you know, I've heard different producers say that uh, they try to use they they use the uh, the Dre the Dr. Dre effect where they they turn everything up and then they start to br- they start to mix down. I mean, what what is your process when you're mixing the beat? When you're mixing the track, and what would you tell that? What would you tell a producer? You know, a, a simple way to get a dope mix. Yeah. So, so my advice would be the uh, the first approach I would say would definitely be just leveling out everything. You know, you could do it the Dr. Dre method, start with everything loud, uh-huh. or you could you know turn all your faders down. And I would say probably start start with your kick and your snare. They're the most kind of dominant, the most dominant. Uh, elements of your production that would be kind of the simplest way once you get a good level um i would say let let some people hear it and i think you should let pe- uh, a person who's unbiased who they have no understanding of the technical aspects right. let them hear it right because that's that's the most unbiased opinion opinion that you're going to get <laughs> but also get somebody's opinion who's very familiar with, with, with how things work because then they're going to tell you well you know it, it's it, it's too it's too loud your hi-hat sounds a little weird and and um stuff like that um i'm actually trying to uh, create an awareness for producers of learning what an eq does and what a compressor does because i feel those are the two most important tools that anybody can use right right and i think a lot of a lot of what we're trying to achieve as engineers and producers comes down to those two pieces of equipment or those two plugins or whatever you do. Um, all of my Mix Tip Monday videos that I have on my YouTube page, I always talk about EQ and compression. Those are the two tools that I use pretty much in all of my videos. So once you get past the whole leveling aspect, uh-huh. if you want to take it, if you want to take it a bit further. Um, and you know, like without getting too technical, I would just say put an EQ and put a compressor on your master track, just to get, uh, oh, just 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 to kind of um, adjust it in that way. And right. then once you want to further further that knowledge and do some research, you know, anybody could, you know, could ask me questions on on Instagram and things like that. Right, and that's a great segue into my next question, man. Since you was talking about. You know, EQ and compression are like the main two things that we use. Um, what is your, I mean, what's your take on, uh, well, I don't want to say what's your take on it, but say, for instance, a producer doesn't have like the Waves bundles and stuff. Uh, what Do you recommend that they use, you know, the EQs that come with the actual DAW that they're using? Uh, because, you know, everybody, everybody, everybody try to get their hands on the Wave bundle or, you know, Isotope or whatever. But what if a producer doesn't have that? What do you recommend that they do? Well, I would like to put it like this. It doesn't matter where you bought a hammer from. It's still going to hit that nail in, into the wall. <laughs> right. So, okay. That's right. Yeah. So, so all my all my YouTube videos, I, I make it a point to say, hey, listen, I'm using the default Pro Tools. You know, um, you know, like the you know the decompressor and just the, and and the seven band EQ. Now, now, do I have the wave bundles? Of course I do. Of course I do. <laughs> right. But, yeah. um, but but like I said, you could get a Black and Decker hammer. You could get a, a hammer from Home Depot, from Target, from BJ's, and it's still gonna hit that nail. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's all about how you know. I'm, I'm a firm believer that it's not about the tools. It's, it's, it's the man uh, behind it. So right. I kind of I, I tell everybody, 
it's all about the understanding of what it does. Right. And as, as long as you get that, I think you're on the right way. Right. You're on the right path. Because when you download and when you buy these other expensive plugins, you'll understand um, how to use them a little better because you started out with something simple or something basic. Even if it's an EQ that's on GarageBand a e or a compressor that's on Studio One, those parameters and those knobs are 90% the same in every other plugin. Right, right, right. Man, uh, you know, that, that, you know, I think, I think there's a, I think, I don't know, I, I think there's a misconception that, you know, as producers, as artists, and, you know, even, even if you was a plumber or, a, or a, a carpenter, it's, you know, I think there's a misconception in, like, you have to have this particular tube to get the job done, you know, and, and it's, it's cool if you can afford that particular tool but if you have something that is not as dope as or not as lavish or, or name branding as that particular tool the two that you have still can get the job done you know and i and i absolutely and you know and and i hate to say you know and, and i'm not bashing i'm not bashing like the the guys who make the plugins and stuff but they know that's the mindset of whatever producer or artist it is like you got to have this but the the standard EQ that comes with the DAW or whatever you're using works the same way. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Now, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, you could get real, real technical and, you know, talk about the processing of the plugins. Yeah. And, and you know, and, 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 and all that. But, hey, it's going to get the job done. And I think, I, you know, I saw this quote that says, Nobody buys the album because that snare sounded a certain way. You know, they bought the music because, you know, it, it, it made them feel something. They, they got an emotion. So even though I am stressing, you know, the whole engineering aspect, it all comes down to the feeling, all comes down to the emotion. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's what, you know, because like, even like yourself, you know, I'm, you know, I know you, you use the Beatmaker app and, and you know, People might frown on it, but I think, hey, whatever gets the job done. I remember I used to use Fruity Loops back in the day, right. and people used to clown, clown me. They used to clown me. They would say, oh, why did you use that? And then I play them my beats, and then they're like, oh my god, you made this on Fruity Loops? And I'm like, yeah, of course I did. Right. And right. now it seems like, now it seems like if you don't use Fruity Loops, you're whack. So, right. You know, what I'm saying trends come and go, opinions are here, and they're always going to be here. You know, whatever gets the job done. I use apps. I use an app called Procores, which is amazing. I use something called Harmony Navigator. That's an amazing program if you get that. So I use whatever I can to make the music, um, and that's all that matters. Right, right. And man, you know, uh, you know, even, and I'm, I'm, it's funny you mentioned, you know, me using Beatmaker. Uh, when I went out to one, when I went to that, went out to you guys' event. Uh, uh, this past a couple of weeks ago at B Camp Dallas, B Camp. yeah, man, you know, people were amazed. You know what I did? What I did? I I signed up the uh, they had you know how they have like the in the beginning where you know producers in the crowd could just come up and play their joints. So when I was up there with yeah. Jay, when I was up there with Jay, shout out to Jay Hash from my standards. Uh, it was we had a beautiful time. We had a great time that weekend. But anyway, when I was up there. I told Jay, hey man, let let the let the people know that I made these joints on my iPad. So when I and, and when I was when I was playing them, people were amazed. You know what I'm saying? And you know, uh, you know, it, people were intrigued. You know, they was wondering. I mean, they was just fascinated about it. But in the beginning, in the beginning, it's funny you said that because me and my homeboy Stan the Man, we was talking about it on his podcast, talking about it in the very beginning. Yeah, shout out to Stan the Man. Yeah, man. shout out. To, yeah, that's shout out to Stan, man. Uh, Stan, that's my guy. He's another beat maker user, beat maker two user as well. And we was talking about it, man. And in the beginning, you know, you was, I mean, I guess you was, you were, I was you know, kind of shame to say, hey, man, I'm making beats on the iPad, but. What I did, I forced myself for a whole year to get off my Logic and off my Cubase, and I got Reason 8.5 myself. And I had already, I already had encountered Beatmaker a while back, but once I got my iPad fixed, I said I'm gonna just go straight iPad, man. And now, 
uh, dude, dudes are not frowning up at it. They are, you know, I get DMs all the time. Say, dog, can you do some tutorials? Man, how are you doing this? How are you doing that? You know what I'm saying? And I guess my whole attitude about it, just like you, Gio, is, hey, man, you can use whatever you got to do what you got to do. You dig? Absolutely. Yeah, man. Absolutely, because you know everybody's situation is different. You know yes. what I'm saying? That's I got right. kids now, so I can't I can't sit in front of a desk for seven hours and try to make a beat. I got kids who want to see, uh, you know, the Disney Channel and all this, you know, exactly. and all this down the third. So I, <laughs> I had I had to adapt, you know, and and um, I had did a video uh, on like Facebook Live where I was just you know making the beat on the spot. Yeah. And I had no shame. I had no shame at all of like pulling out a program on my laptop that I use to help with my chord progressions because I'm not going to sit there and, and front like I know how to play these keys. You right. know what I'm saying? So right. I, have the I have the tools I have the tools to help me achieve what I want to achieve. Right. And hey, hey, I have no problem endorsing these assets. They want to they wanna contact me and cut me a check. I'd be more happy, more than happy to support them and to, and to promote <laughs> these apps because... You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Procord. You know, Procord is one of my main apps. Yeah. About $5 on the app store. Shout out to um, Omni Navigator, the company that makes, I think it's called Cognitone. Yeah. That's about $45, maybe $150. Right. You know, all, all, all it is, is is for chord progressions because I could use my laptop and I could bang out the drums, but when it comes to the, the, the musical aspect, the instrumentation, Hey, I have no shame to use none of those. I will use right. all the apps that I can right. to help me get to where I gotta go. Right, and man, and you know, and and man, see, you opening up a whole nother conversation because you know you get a lot of producers that frown up on using, you know, like. Uh, for just for instance, like construction kits or loops and stuff. And man, you know, I was uh, me uh, I, this past this past uh, this past March, uh, I was able to I put together this this producer conference for South by Southwest. And one in, in, in my guy Malik, shout out to uh, my homie Malik. Uh, he he uh, we the, one of the questions was, what do you guys think about using loops? And all of the producers that were on the panels, they was like, man, I try to stay away from them. And then Malice was like, hold on, man. Let me let me put y'all on game. Most of your major producers use constructive loops and build around those mugs. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. People, people use different apps to get things going. Like... I, you gonna you gonna have to you gonna have to text me that information to the app that you're talking about because I'm not a fluent chord player. I need that. <laughs> you know? Hey, yo, I, I'm telling you, man. And you know, like I did a post. You know, I tried to tag them. Yeah. And, like they only had like two posts. Man, I'm about to DM them and be like, hey, man, let me let me be the ambassador or, or, or something of it, man. And like, and when it comes to these loops, small, like it's really about oh, like all right, I use loops. Yeah. But I also, but I also, you know, uh, I also chop up those loops as well. You exactly. Know? I might not play it. In the, I might not play it in the exact order that that loop is. Neither. What um, and like this is also like a pro tip, right? Because I, you know, I'll download, I'll purchase uh, kits and sound kits and stuff like that. I might take, I might take a drum loop from this one, from this one sample pack. Yeah. Mix it with the synth loop of another sample pack. And mix it with, you know, I, you know, I'm just taking bits and pieces from every sound. But even if they're loops, I might take a loop from here and mix right. it with a loop from there. Because now, if you're a producer, right? Because right. I know, you know, in my experience of, of drum kits, right? Let's say you have, let's say you have a beat that's called um, Show Lab Beat, right? Right. So in your in your folder, it's gonna say the BPM and whatever. It's gonna say, okay, now it's gonna have Show Lab Kick, Show Lab Hi Hat, Show Lab Synth. Show lab bass, et cetera, et cetera. Right. right. Then I have, then let's say I have another, another kit that's called Geo the Rican sound kit, and it has Geo the Rican kick, Geo the Rican snare, and so on. I'm gonna take the Show Lab synth, mix it with the Geo the Rican piano loop, and if it works, if it's in the same key and everything like that, that's a brand new beat. But some cats, they're just using the Show Lab kit, Show Lab bass, Show Lab hi hat, and they're making. They're pretty much just recreating the beat and putting it out as themselves. Right. That's something I'm against. But right. I have no shame grabbing a drum loop because sometimes 
you might be stuck with this kick and snare pattern that a loop is just going to give you a whole new a whole new a whole new essence that you weren't even thinking of so i have plenty of drum loops that might it might just help me in the beginning and i'm and it might inspire me to come up with a with another loop on top of that so i think i don't think producers should frown on it at all especially these breakbeat loops man that's another pro tip you put a breakbeat loop underneath your drum and snare pattern the groove you get is amazing so Shout out to anybody and everybody using loops, man. Wow. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, you know, me personally, I use loops too, man. And I find myself, I might take a piano loop, build, build, a, build all the other instruments around it. Uh, and, 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 and like you say, man, I think they're great. I think they're great because, like you were saying, you can just be stuck with like this drum loop, this 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 kick and snare, and sometimes you might just be going through producer blockage. You know what I'm saying? Oh, Using cool. a fire scent or a fire piano uh, loop, man, would 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 get it, get you out of that rut that you may be in. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Um, who are some of the who are some engineers that you look up to, bro? Young Guru, man. I'm not going to lie to you, bro. Everything I do is just because I want to be the Puerto Rican Young Guru. Like, G- Gio, <laughs> like, Gio, how did you how, how did you know that I knew you was going to say Young Guru? <laughs> <laughs> he is the man. Shout yeah, out to hey, Young I'm Guru. Probably, yeah, man. He's just, you know, he's, he, he's the one that um, coming up was like, Who's Young Guru? You know what I'm saying? Because exactly. if, if you was the rapper or the producer, nobody right. was thinking about the engineer. Right. And I think, you know, and like just just him being a minority too. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't want to like get too deep into that, but just seeing uh, somebody of color, yeah, man, being recognized, yes, on this on this technical level. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Uh, it's, it's, I don't want to put it out there, but but there's a certain stereotype. Uh, image of an audio engineer. Yes. And I think I'm just trying to break, and I'm just trying to break that imagery. You know what I'm saying? It's either you're an American or this European guy. And, right. I, you know, I'm here letting people know, you know, I'm from the Bronx, New York, born and raised in the projects, but that doesn't make me any less of anybody else. That's why I'm here trying to really put a face to engineering. Right. And a young face, you know what I'm saying? I'm, yeah. I'm about to be 30 in, 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 in a couple of years. Okay. And I just want something like you know, people see me and they might relate to me. You know, I look younger than I am and they say, hey, you know, he's, he's, you know, I'm not lying. I'm not giving a harsh opinion about something. I believe everything that I'm saying is, is, is generally honest and generally true. I'm not here saying, oh, your mixes have to sound like this. I'm just really out here saying do's and don'ts. And if it wasn't for young guru creating that imagery of, of, of a smart young man coming up and, and, and a person who I can relate to, I don't, I don't think I would be where I am right now. Shout out to Young Guru, man, for what, what, he, do, what he does and do, man. Uh, you know, uh, when, when you think about Young Guru, I, didn't, I guess I didn't, I didn't really put the face together until I seen the, the fade to black. And I was like, "Oh, that's Young Guru." So what I did, what I did, I just started paying attention to what he was doing, and um, you know what I'm saying. And I and I even uh, would even uh, follow him and see him on uh, P- uh, Pensado. He, he I seen an episode where he was on with Dave Pensado's on Pensado's plays, and yep. you know just checking yep, out his yep. YouTube Seen video. Yeah, man. So, uh, and it, and like you say, man, just a, a a brother, a person of color. You know, what I'm saying that's really making an impact on the industry. And he's he, man. You know, he's a knowledgeable and a educated dude, man. You know, what I'm saying I see that he's into a lot of photography, uh, iPhone photography these days, man. Uh, but yeah, uh, definitely shout out to Young Guru, man. Is there anybody else that you admire that you look up to? Yeah. Um... Uh, growing up, it was Young Guru. It was also Duro. Uh huh. Yeah. Soul, that, yeah, like, I remember Duro. Like, uh huh. Right. You know, he, 
Like, he's, he's dope. And really, I think, um, 40. Like, right now, like, the, 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 the things he's doing with Drake, and I think what makes him dope is that he might throw in some technical phrase here and there. Yeah. But he's really just keeping it real simple. And he's kind of stressing the whole simplicity movement of, like, you yes. know, don't add too much. You know, don't add too much. And... Um, and just really creating his own lane as an engineer. Like, a lot of engineering schools, they say that the only rule is that there are no rules. There's more, like, rule of thumbs than there are actually, like, saying, you can't do this, you must right. do that. Right. So I think uh, 40, Guru, and, and Duro, um, or, like, people who I look up to, people who I'm aware of are, like, um, Ali from the West Coast, you know what I'm saying? He, he does a lot of uh, Kendrick Lamar joints. Right. Um... And off the top of my head, those would be the ones that that, that I really admire, especially Young Guru. Because, like yeah. I said before, I'm just I'm just basically following his steps and right. just trying to and just trying to make my way. On right, and man, you know, to achieve everything. That you have. Right, and you know, and even even talking about uh, forty. Uh, and for those, I hope whoever's listening, if you're a producer, you should know who 40 is. Noah Sheeb, um, that's Drake's engineer slash producer. If you didn't know that, uh, pause and I slap yourself <laughs> for those that are listening. <laughs> but what he did, what he did even in the culture of music and just the, and even from the production aspect, man, he changed, he really changed the sound, man. He brought a lot of the filtering you know, when dudes, you know, that wasn't that wasn't that kind of filter filter uh, being that filtering being done in songs where like he filter a whole phrase like a whole scent part. You know what I'm saying? It was it, it was just it was exactly. like a it was it was just a breath of fresh air what he was doing, man. And it wasn't it it was almost like this subtle approach that he was taking. But it just it just felt so good. It just feels so good when you hear you hear the mix of what he uh, of what he's doing, man. So uh, definitely shouts out to Forty Duro and Young Guru, um, you know, for being exactly, man. Cause, Cause like if Guru was the face of engineering, Forty was the sound of engineering. Yes, like, people might not know what an engineer does before Forty came in and like really, yeah, you know. What he did, you know, right, and and what he did, he put it, he presented it in a way to where it was, it's more, is 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 more approachable and not intimidating, you know what I'm saying? Because Guru, you know, when you seen him in the studio, he was behind his, he was in front of this big old Soundcraft with his SSL 4000 board with the Pro Tools setup, mm -hmm. you know, forty, he might be in his hotel room. Mixing on Pro Tools, so he made it more. I think Forty, he what he did, he made mixing more approachable, approachable, and gave producers the mindset: Hey, man, I can do this. I don't need this. I don't need all this. I don't need this big studio to really be creative and get a good sound. So uh, he did really uh, create a, 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 a put. A, he put a stamp in in the music world, you know, just from a from mm -hmm. an engineering. Uh, engineer standpoint man um before we get out of here geo man uh is there any advice that you would give any young engineers man uh that's getting into the business um you know I, man before you answer that there's a I, I i that's a question that just came came in my mind uh you know i guess at one at one point in time the dj was the producer the producer, the, the DJ was the engineer. He was like the all, he was like the three in one, right? You know, the, the, the yeah. DJ was the producer. The DJ was the engineer. You know what I'm saying? The DJ was the a and &R. You know, he was all these things, man. Um, do you think, do you think that process of working is still valid today? Or do you think they should, yeah, they should be separate positions and separate entities? Um, I would say if the hat fits, wear it. Don't, you know, don't force a title upon yourself because 
you may not know the amount of responsibility and the amount of work that comes with it. You know, right. um, me, you know, me being a part of the I Stand the social media team, you know, I could give advice on, on you know, how to be more active uh, social media wise, and you know, I have artists or I have friends that I help and, and stuff like that. But that doesn't mean that I know how to be in marketing or public relations. You know, what I'm saying I don't, I don't really want to wear that hat. You right. Know what I'm saying because it kind. Of, because uh, it's really worked best if I'm doing I standard stuff and if I'm doing stuff, you know, you know, for my brand. Right. So if the hat fits, wear it. You know what I'm saying? Especially now in 2016, you know, you have to have a slash in your title. You yeah. Know? You can't just be producer. You have to be producer, blogger, producer, engineer, producer, uh, director, producer. You know, it, a slash has to be there somewhere because especially now at an age where everything's accessible, you kind of want to not so much be a one-stop shop for somebody, but at least be a very solid starting point. Right, right, right. To be right. like, okay, like, like I know Gio can't manage me. He can't really promote me. Right. But at least he could, at least I could buy a beat from Gio. Right. Have him, <laughs> record, have him record me, mix me, and master the song. You know, so like the artists that I work with, you know, I tell them all the time, hey, listen, the music side is taken care of. I can provide you with everything in terms of recording and mixing. The advertising, hey, I don't mind that being the hard part. Because right. some people can't even get the studio time. They can't get the engineering. So, like I said before, if the hat fits, wear it, but don't force, don't give yourself no titles if you're not ready for that responsibility. Right, right. And I got one more question before you give the advice to the young producers, man. Uh, what are you using these right. days? I know you say you're using reasons, uh, but what is your what is your what is your setup at the crib? All right, so so on my laptop, I have Reason Five. Uh huh. I have Reason Five. Mm-hmm. Um, I have Logic. Uh, I have Logic Nine. And okay. Honestly, I'm only using I'm only using Logic. Um, to use Omnisphere and like Nexus and stuff like that. And right. I just I just kind of like you know I kind of like the sound of how uh, of how Logic sounds when you put everything through it. Right. Um. I use I use a program called Harmony Navigator. Uh huh. Um. And that's a chord progression software that basically helps you come up with a particular chord progression. Um. I have apps on my phone. I use Pro Chords, uh-huh. which is another. Uh, which is another chord progression app software. Um, and I just have, like, tools. You know, I have an app that helps me find the key of a song. Right. Um, which is very which is very important. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know how to play any instruments, but... Um, and I know a lot of producers, they, they you know, you, you just play it by ear. If it feels good, it must be the right note. Right. However, I feel like if, however, if you know the key of the song, right? Mm-hmm. Let's say you have a twenty, a twenty-five key MIDI keyboard, right? Right. If you know the key of a song, now you've narrowed down your guessing from twenty-five keys to seven, and you can work around those notes that are relative to that chord. So I have an app that helps me find the chord of any of, of any beat that I'm making. Like if I if I have a sample that I'm using. Mm-hmm. I like to know the key of that sample. So if I'm coming up with a bass line or if I'm coming up with some with some music to support that sample, right. I know sonically I know sonically where I'm at. So I just use uh you know, I use a, a app that helps me find the key of the song. As an engineer, I have a couple of tempo apps, uh Pro Chords, Harmony Navigator, Logic, Reason, and of course the bread and butter Pro Tools. I have Pro Tools ten, but I'm familiar with like all the Pro Tools that I are right now. Wow. Wow. Man, you know, man, see this this interview can go on and on, uh, because I just thought of a, <laughs> I just thought of another thought when you said Pro Tools. I I I, I see and I'm starting to see, man, a lot of people a lot of people have mixed feelings about Pro Tools, but at the same time, you you still have a lot of people that use Pro Tools. You know what I'm saying? But see that see that can be another conversation. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think I think to put it real shortly, I think you know, people people love it when they find their own methods of yes. working out and exercising. Right. 
Uh, but there's always going to be the proper facility to train at, right? Right. So people could people use Logic to mix, and I've heard some amazing mixes on Logic. I've heard amazing mixes on like Reason Eight and Nine. I've heard amazing mixes on Ableton. Right. But there's always a legitimate place to get, you know, a broader sounding mix, and I think that's Pro Tools, you know. Right. So I think I think that's the analogy that I could give. You know, a lot of people have different methods of working out, but there's always going to be a a legitimate facility to work out. A lot of people are going to do their mixes on a whole bunch of different doors, but I feel like Pro Tools, even as as strong as a backing that Logic has, I think Pro Tools will still and always be like the standard in any in any type of facility and in, 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 in any type of situation. Right, 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 right. Yeah, man. Uh, and I think, I think, at the end of the day, you know, um, you just, I mean, if you're gonna be in that arena, man, you just, you, you're gonna have to encounter Pro Tools if you like it or not. No matter how you feel, it's, it's almost, it's almost like that baby mama. She gonna always be around <laughs> <laughs> if, yeah, you, yeah. if you like it or not, and you gotta always. Uh, you got to be able to compromise and try to keep the peace uh, with it, because if it, with it, because if not, you know, um, your stuff may be not up to par. That I think you, the baby mom analogy may be a little off, but uh, that when you think about Pro Tools, man, one thing I notice about Pro Tools is 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 greedy. You, it, they don't want, it don't want. They don't want no other program open while you're using that mug. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that joke is a it is a P it is a CPU hog for real, for sure. But see, we yeah, can exactly. I think um because <laughs> I think I think you can only rewire uh I think you can only rewire rewire uh reason. Yeah. Um yeah. But I know but I know that you cannot open logic and pro tools like right. at the same time. Cause only because only one or the other can take your, you know, could could use your your computer's output. Right. So that's right. why you can never open like two at the same time. But yeah, I think I think as of right now, probably only reason and maybe like like maybe like another door can be used simultaneously. But yeah, Pro Tools, you know, Pro Tools like you know, they don't like to play with others, they like to be, you know, themselves. But you know, I don't really use Pro Tools in terms of production. It's just strictly mixing because psychologically I just can't separate the two. Like right. I have to if I as soon as I see that screen open up, I'm in full engineering mode. No doubt, man. No doubt, bro. Shout out to uh Avid Pro Tools over there. Um uh, they I mean they, they, they striving. I mean they, they are they are the go to uh, for for what they do, man. I, every every program have has their thing. So, you know, uh, just sh- mm-hmm. sh- shouts out to them all, man. Uh, now, now, what what advice would you give that aspiring engineer that's looking to get into this to this line of uh, work? Uh, what is what is some advice you would give them, bro? Um, definitely, it, it's about working with people and. Uh, understanding how people work, having an understanding of how to talk to people. Uh-huh. Um, I think um, I think my years of working in retail kind of helped me, pre- like, kind of prepared me for that. Right. So I would think of that, and I think like a lot of my engineer etiquette are kind of just like 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 a good guideline. If I were to pick a couple of the ones I've already made, I think the first one that I made, which is um, knowing how to run a session. Right. I think. That's the most important thing because, you know, they never taught me that in school, you know, and, you know, all these engineer etiquette videos that I do come from personal experiences or from experiences that um, other engineers have have shared with me. And what I said in the video was um, it could be a 16 year old kid from the block that just started rapping. It could be a 27-year-old gangbanger that just might rob you after the session, uh-huh. or it could be a 30 or a 35-year-old gospel singer that still believes in, in their dream. You have to know how to work with with each and every one of them and everybody in between, and having good people skills above anything else mm. is going to really help you in your career because. Even if you make a mistake, if you're a good person about it, they they gonna be like, well, you know, you tried your best. Don't worry about it. You right, know? right. But if right. you were, you know, but if you were a jerk the whole session, <laughs> you're not listening to the artist. Right. You know, you know, you're not, you know, you're not following the instructions that they're giving you. Right. 
you know. Especially if they're you know, paying you. You could really just, <laughs> yeah, that's it. So, you know, I think above all else, um, the two things I would say is, you know, establish great rapport with, 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 the, with the client, and that just goes with communication and knowing how to talk to talk to the artists, talk to the managers, talk right. to the entourage. And secondly, would be knowing how to run a session. And that's everything from um, setting up the time, receiving the, you know, any MP3s that they want to freestyle or any mm. song that they want to do over, uh, getting that beforehand before they even get there, um, establishing boundaries, mm. uh, establishing, you know, establishing time when you're going to end, you know, this all comes down to knowing how to run a session, you know? Right. Um, you know, no one went to cut you the session. Like, no one went to stop recording and and when to start actually mixing or, like, you know, when to close out the session because right. artists might not understand that it takes maybe 20 minutes to a half hour to do everything that we need to do, whether it's to do a rough mix, right. to bounce down the track, save it to your hard drive, email it to you, email it to yourself, you know, to the manager. All that takes, you know, that takes about 15 to 15 minutes to, you know, to a half hour. Right. So knowing how to run a session and knowing how to communicate are the, are the two important uh, pieces of advice I'd give to any engineer, starting or veteran. Wow. Well, so uh, in a nutshell, just have good PR skills. <laughs> yeah, 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 man. Good PR good skills. You know, yeah, be a be, people person. Be a good person. Yeah. You know, have faith. Believe that everything's in God's hands, and you should be straight, man. Right, man. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's good stuff, there, bro. Uh, real quick, man. Tell the people how they can get in contact with you, man. For uh, give them, give them your, and I'm gonna post. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it in the description as well. Uh, but just tell them, you know, what they, how they can get in contact with you for mixing or questions or whatever, man. Yeah, absolutely. They could, you know, they. Uh, my Instagram is Geo the Rican. Mm-hmm. That's G E O T H E. R I C A N, and that's really for you know for all social media platforms. It's you know at Gmail is 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 the email, so it's geotherican at gmail dot com. My YouTube is Geo the Rican. Just type that in, and you'll see my channel. And just want to thank you, Marv, man, for the opportunity to just you know talk to the people, you know, reach a different audience, and just talk about what I'm trying to do. Um, shout out to I Stand, the producers, man. That's the team. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody. So Jay Hatch, um, the Thrill Collins, who is Mr. Jones, the amazing SB, KB, legend. Um, all my guys out there, I Stand, where, you know, I'm a part of an amazing team, an amazing movement. And um, a lot of the things that I'm doing now, if it wasn't for them, it, it, just, it just wouldn't be possible. So I just want right. to thank them, thank you, and thank all the listeners and anybody that's tuning in and anybody that hits me up. I'm, I'm a nice guy. Just approach me, and I'll, I'll answer your question, and I'll, I'll work with you. No doubt, man. And I again, bro, I appreciate you taking time out, man, to uh, get on the show, man, and just to let people into your world. And again, man, shout out to my homeboy, Amazing SB, man. That's my guy for sure. Uh, he was responsible uh, for me being able to go to B Camp Dallas, man. And uh, shout out to Jay Hatch. Shout out to Mike Miser as well, man. I, I got a chance to get it up yeah, with Mike. Mike. And um, and oh, what's what's the other guy? Oh man, now now this that now, now this is so messed up because I forgot his name. But he was that was the guy that was working the table, uh, out there at uh, B Camp. What's his name? Craig. Ah, now see when we get off the air, that's when I'm gonna remember, bro. But anyway, man, shout out to the <laughs> I Standers crew, man. Uh, dope. Dope family oriented oriented uh folks over there, man. And again, bro, I appreciate you uh taking time out to be with me on the show, man. Anytime, man, anytime. I appreciate I appreciate everything that you're doing for producing, man. No Good doubt. Work. No doubt, man. And you've been listening to the show lab producer podcast where we talk about nothing but producer stuff, you dig. You are listening to the Show Lab Producer Podcast. The podcast that's strictly for producers. Yo, this is Surface. And you're listening to the Show Lab Producer Podcast with my homie Marv. Keep it locked. This show has been brought to you by SacredApparel.net. The homie Twink and the crew over there are always coming up with the latest fashions. The tees, the hoodies, and the hats. Right now, they got a store-wide sale going on. Everything 20% off. This would be a great time to pick up a hoodie. Everything 40% off. 
regular price forty dollars, now they twenty five dollars a hoodie. And the dope thing that I like about Sacred Apparel, they got tees for the big homes. So go check them out, sacredapparel.net, a clothing store for the ladies and gentlemen that choose to live sacred. You dig? Are you looking for those heavy trap bangers? Then you definitely need to holler at Rock House Music, specialized and known for those bending 808. You may have heard his recent work on K-Drama's The 8 album. So if that's the sound you're going for, holler at my man Anthony over at Rock House Music. You can check out his beats on SoundCloud at www.soundcloud.com slash IamRockHouse. Again, that's www.soundcloud.com slash IamRockHouse. Rock House Music. Home of the Bending 808. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are you a producer or artist that is lacking confidence in your music? Well, now you can get your music critiqued by our industry vet. The Amazing Beat Critique by Producer Vet, The Amazing SB. Get your one-on-one video consultation via Skype or FaceTime. Submit three beats or three songs, and he will provide feedback and any questions that you may have pertaining to your music or the industry. So contact The Amazing SB today at AmazingBeatCritique at gmail.com. Again, that's AmazingBeatCritique at gmail.com. Contact him and book your session today. Yo, this is the amazing SB, and you're listening to the Show Lab Producer Podcast with my homie Marv. Make sure you tuned in to theamazingsb.com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're listening to the Show Lab Producer Podcast, man. I am your boy Marv. Hey, man. Shouts out to my homeboy Gio the Rican for being on the show. That brother was dropping some. Uh, Good knowledge, man. Some some great stuff. Uh, just some different techniques on uh, what you can do as an indie producer, man, to just get a dope mix and stuff. Uh, follow my man, Gio the Rican. It's at Gio the Rican. <laughs> the, uh, his, his 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 social media hand, handle is going to be in the description. Hit him up. Uh, he is a, a a friendly guy. He is an approachable dude, and he will respond to any questions that you may have pertaining to engineering and all that good stuff man so shout out to geo man for being on the show man i appreciate you my guy i wish all the best success uh for what you're doing man and what and what god got for you in the future you dig before we get out of here man i'm gonna get into my producer thought and let me let me cut the music down last week Last week, I want to apologize to you guys. The, the show went completely off the air due to the internet going down in my area. Uh, so uh, I apologize for that, man, uh, for the technical difficulties, man. Um, hopefully uh, another uh, internet company come in the area so I can... Uh, so I can move and get over to to another company, man. But that's what happened with the show last week. Uh, thank God we was able to get the interview. We, I think there was a little bit of the interview that we didn't get, man. Uh, but I want to just say I apologize for that. And uh, I didn't get a chance to do the producer thought last week. So I'm going to do the producer thought today that would have been for last week. And my thought is, the grind is necessary, but God's timing is impeccable. I'm going to read that again. The grind is necessary. The grind is necessary, but God's timing is impeccable. That word impeccable means infallible, flawless, like... There's nothing, there's no mistakes, right? There's a scripture in the Bible, in the book of James, uh, James chapter four. I want to know. Yeah. James chapter four, uh, where it talks about faith without works is dead. The grind is necessary, but God's timing is impeccable. You have to grind and that's what anything you know, you have to work hard. My pastor always talks about uh, burning the midnight earl, right? If you're working at you're working at something, accomplishment, accomp, uh, you have to accomplishment, accomplish it by working hard at it. 
But you got to make sure there's a balance because we can grind, grind, grind. But until God open up the doors, they won't open. Now, so what does that scripture fate without work is dead come in? You have to be doing something in order to for God to say, you know what? Man, he is working hard at this. You know what? I'm going to meet him halfway. He's not just saying I'm waiting for this big break to happen and he's not doing anything like he's being diligent in his craft. He's up. He's studying. He's practicing. He's practicing different techniques, whatever it is. He's putting in the work. Then the then God will say, you know what? Let me go and open this door because you know what? I think he can handle that. He's being studious. He's being diligent. Let's do it. Again, the grind is necessary, but God's timing is impeccable. And one thing about God's timing that I have experienced in my life is when he opened up a door, man, he opened up the doors. He, it, it, the floodgates open. You dig? Stuff starts, it blows your mind, the things that, you know, begin to happen. You know what I'm saying? Things that you didn't even, wasn't even looking for. Because of the hard work and the diligence and the grind, he blows your mind like that. And you have to, and another thing too, you have to remember that man, that you don't get before his time, that you don't go before his time. Everything has a time and place for everything. It's some, t- it's some things, it's, it, it, there's some doors that, that, are, that don't need to be open at that moment because it doesn't need to be open at that moment. You may not be physically, spiritually, or mentally ready to handle that open door. So everything has to have a balance. You have to have a balance in the grind, and you have to be balanced and in tune and be grateful for God's timing. And guess what? When them doors when, when them doors open, when God's timing is right there, and when he open it, it's going to flow. So, man, that's just my producer thought for today. The ground is necessary, but God's timing is impeccable. And when he do it, won't he do it? (laughs) So, man, I hope you guys enjoyed the show, man. Uh, I had a good time hanging out with you guys. Um, Please, please, please spread the word. Let people know, man. Let people know about the show. Uh, let people know what we got going on, man. Um, I love doing what I'm doing. I love being able to uh, be with you guys every week uh, to, you know, do the podcast and have different uh, people on different different uh, you know topics that we're talking about. Um, so spread the word, man. Let people know. You know what I'm saying. Support us. You know what I'm saying. Um, man, I'm 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 gonna actually put up a a, a a PayPal link on my website, man. The, if you, if you love what we're doing, man, we would love for you to donate to the show, man. You know what I'm saying? Because we give we giving away the podcast free, but you know it is a cost for us to you know to uh, to be on the platform that we on, man. So uh, main thing, man, spread the word. Let people know. Uh, let us know if you're enjoying the show. Uh, send us a like button follow us on Spreaker uh, subscribe to it on on iTunes leave us a comment on iTunes man we need those things so we can gauge on how we on how we are doing as a podcast man uh, so yeah man uh, next week I'm gonna have my guy Nick uh, he's a producer and he's a health uh, expert he's a health guru. Uh, we're going to have him on the show next week, man. And we're going to just talk about health. We're going to call, we're going to call episode, I mean, episode 12, the health show. And the reason I called it the health show, because uh, I, I was, um, I followed him on Instagram and this dude, he put his journey of losing weight on Instagram. You know what I'm saying? And, and just from a producer aspect and, you know, as producers, man, we we're sitting down a lot, uh, 
some some of us that have home studios, the refrigerator is like in the next room. You know what I'm saying? So it's just easy for us to just go grab some junk. You know, a bowl of cereal. You know, two three bowls of cereal, depending on how long you're up, man. And what's happening, man? It starts to affect our health. You know, uh, and you you'd be surprised, man. You'd be putting on that weight just sitting at your desk making beats and stuff, man. So. Uh, we're going to have him on the show. He's going to just give us his uh, testimony and talk to us about his whole transformation and the steps that he took. And uh, he has, a, and we're going to talk about his new beat tape. His new beat tape is called the Vintage Beat Cruiser, Nickel Plate Vintage, uh, Vintage Beat Cruiser. Uh, you can go pick that up on Bandcamp. Uh, you can follow him on Instagram. It's at Nickel Plate. That's N I K K L E P L A T E Nickel Plate, and uh, go check his check his beat, his beat tape out. Uh, he has the link in his description, man. You can go check that mug out. It's a dope beat tape, and we're gonna have him on the show next week, man. So uh, I am looking forward to sharing that information on what we can do, uh, how we can change our bad habits of eating. Uh, us studio rats that's what we are we 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 lounge and we rat around in the studio uh this is where we spend a lot of our time at so we need to have healthy choices in our eatings we need to make good decisions on what we're snacking on if not man we're gonna be fat and that's just the bottom line and uh i love you guys i'm gonna get on out of here until next time until next tuesday keep making them beats this is your boy, Mar from Beats. You've been listening to the Show Lab Producer Podcast, where we talk about nothing but producer stuff. You dig? You're listening to the Show Lab Producer Podcast, where we talk about nothing but producer stuff. You dig? <laughs>